would you open your books to the book of Proverbs, 22nd chapter. Uh, very good, it's a very good study. Uh, I've enjoyed studying some of it. And uh, of course, we know that Solomon was blessed with the understanding and the uh, ability to write or have it wrote and uh, he was very wise he was very uh, close to the Lord and of course at times I'm sure that uh, he wasn't as close as he wanted to be but he wrote down he had it had some good uh, stuff wrote down and we want to study just a little bit this morning in some of the things and I was thinking as as I was trying to study this, you know, uh, sometimes we need to pray more for uh, more uh, understanding. Amen. Because now this man, God blessed because that he had done what he wanted to do, and he gave him wisdom to to run, run a a nation. He gave him everything that he ever needed as far as money, gold, and all this because that he obeyed what he and, and he and he was with God and uh, and so he wrote these things down in, in his in some of his ways of talking and some of the ways some of the things that he says uh, it's not really plain to me but the deeper you, uh, the more you look at it and the more you try to worry about it, you understand some of the things that he was saying. And so hopefully this morning we can uh, we can get a blessing from this. I know we can because the Lord uh, the Lord laid this on my heart and it's what he wanted me to do for nothing else but just to read it. But in the ch in chapter 22 of the book of Proverbs, he's talking about a condition that man needs to be in and that they would understand more about uh, the Word of God and understand the love of God and he he's talking here this morning about a uh, people and what they have and he gives a he's, he, he gives a two part of the the good and the bad or the not pleasing to God and the pleasing to God and so notice here as we start in chapter 22 verse 1 it says a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. Amen. Now notice, he's talking about a good name and great riches. Now notice, and loving favor rather than silver and gold. So the loving favor and the good name, he compares to the great riches and the silver and the gold. Now he's saying this morning, and the spirit, uh, the spirit of God bear witness with this and, and, and we understand that our, our, our fleshly being is a sinful being and our, our flesh <clears throat> desires one of these mm. more so than it does the other but our spirit when we get close to the Lord and we try to understand what he's talking to us about, and all, we see the need of which one that the Lord would have us to, to, to do. Now notice, right. good name, we all, we all need to have a good name. Mm -hmm. We all need to be in the community as having a good name and, and the respect of people, whereas so when, if we speak to to one of them, they they take interest, or they they know that it's coming from uh, uh, a person that is has a good name. So he said, a good name is rather to be chosen. So we see here in this rather that there is a decision that we need to make. It's not a decision for salvation, right? But it is a decision after salvation that we need to establish a good name. Amen. And that we need to be able to be out here and when we go out and, and, and uh, uh, witness to people that they'll take notice and, 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 and say, well, uh, can you explain this a little bit better or uh, I thought on that or 
you can give them the, the place to read in the Bible and say, there it is. You can read it for yourself and the Lord will show it. But anyway, a good name is rather to be chosen. So we, we as, a, as, as God's people, we need to uh, strive to have a good name and a good reputation. And he says it's greater than great riches. And now the thing of it is in our, in our flesh, the quickest, what we want to do is strive for great riches. Right. But now great riches is not really what we need because what, what riches we need, God will give them to us if we obey him. And he knows what our need is. So notice here, again, and the loving favor rather than silver and gold. So silver and gold What's going to happen to it when this world's on fire? It's going to vanish. It's right. going to go. But the loving, uh, the loving, uh, loving favor of the Lord will never cease. Right. Now I want to, I want to read you a few scriptures that that, that kind, of go, kind of goes along with this. But look in in Proverbs thirteen fifteen. Understanding giveth favor. Now, good understanding a lot of times don't give favor to man. But the thing of it is, with a good name, they will listen sometimes. But good favor, good understanding giveth favor. But the way of a transgressor is hard. Every prudent man or capable of using uh, sound judgment. That's uh, prudence that I've seen. Uh, of sound judgment in uh, matters, and not rash. A prudent, every prudent man dealeth with knowledge, but a fool layeth open his folly. Now, the, the thing that he identifies here with is a fool, and the, what does the fool say? The fool says that there is no God. Right. And so here he's saying, a prudent man dealeth with knowledge, but a fool lieth open his folly. A wicked messenger falleth into mischief, but a faithful ambassador is help. And so here is the, the comparison to these. Again, notice a wise messenger and a foolish uh, ambassador, or a, 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 this, it, our, this is... This is he's comparing this to, and so back in our lesson this morning, we want to we want to look at one more thing, and then we'll go on. And this 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 morning, uh, I I read and I reread it, and I thought about it, and I thought about it. But notice in eighteen and uh, twenty one, eighteen twenty one, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So this death is one thing and life is another thing, but he says that the, the power of the tongue and they shall love that love it then shall eat the fruit of it. And I, I'm, I'm thinking this morning, if we have the heart of the Lord, if we have uh, that say we're going to love the fruit of, of what he gives us. But if we if we have death and we're not going to say, listen, we're going to we're going to uh, eat the fruit thereof of eternal damnation. And so, but notice number twenty two, verse twenty two. Whosoever findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtaineth favor of the Lord. Now, why would they, he write, obtaineth favor of the Lord? Well, we, we look back in Adam and Eve in Genesis 2 and 20, and the Lord, after God, after he was created all the animals, and, and Adam named them, but he looked, and there was not a mate for Adam. And so what did he do? He created one for Adam, and he said, it's not good for man to live alone. And so a wife here is whosoever findeth a wife findeth a good thing. And this morning, 
we should we should we should uh, 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 be glad of our wives. Mm -hmm. We should treat them in the way that they need to be treated. We should thank the Lord for them because listen, they notice here in verse 23, the poor useth them truly, but the rich answereth roughly. Now notice, a man that hath friends must show himself friendly. And listen, this is the same way towards your wife. Uh, you, we need to show ourselves friendly towards them and be uh, nice to them and appreciate them because the Lord gives them to us. I don't think we uh, accidentally run across a, a, a wife and uh, just right. by, by chance. I think that he directed me. I think he directs his children because I know he knows who his children are. Amen. And he directs them. And so he says, uh, Whosoever findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtaineth favor of the Lord. And so through the, I think that it's, 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 it's good for the, for the man not to, not to say, uh, not to marry, I mean to marry. And I think that he, he, he should, he should, uh, uh, treat his wife in the, in the way that he wants to be treated and, and he'll have a companion that will go the last mile with him. And uh, so this is, this is, this is, I think. Now notice in, in, in verse 2, the rich and the poor meet together. The Lord is the maker of them all. In other words, the rich help the poor and the poor help the rich. But now notice what he's saying. The rich may be loaded with money, but be just as sad as they can be. And the poor may be just as sad as they can be, but rich in spirit and, and not have a, a nickel to call their own and have to go to the rich man and try to borrow and all. And, and we'll see a, a, a little bit more about that, but, but here's the rich and the poor meet together and the Lord is the maker of them all. Now notice, a prudent man, uh, one that makes wise decisions and all this, foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. Now, the, the, the man that, that thinks these things out tries to live for the Lord, the Holy Spirit will guide him and direct him and help him to bypass and to hide himself from these evil things. But here, the the uh, the, the the this is the prudent man. But the simple pass on and are uh, 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 punished. And, and I thought about simple. And this simple man, you know, in the scriptures, there it tells where the simple man passed by the corner of right. this woman. He, he, he didn't realize what was on his way, but listen, he got into trouble. And so we, this morning, need to make, we need to make wise decisions. We need to be more prudent than we are and think about things that are uh, 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 in the will of the Lord and yeah. not, be, not be quick to make these decisions and all of this, but just ask the Lord, Lord, help me to, to make the right decisions because, listen, we have that privilege. Amen. We have the privilege of coming to God the Father through the Lord Jesus Christ and, and asking Him for advice and asking Him to show us the way that He would have us to go. So a prudent man foreseeth the evil. That's one thing this morning. If we're in the will of the Lord, I believe that the Lord through the Holy Spirit will warn us, will show us, will give us a an unction some way, hey, stay away from that, or, uh, you know, uh, some people that you, that you see right away, their spirit does not bear witness with your spirit. Listen, you know there's something wrong. And so this is what he's talking about here this morning. The Holy Spirit warns us in this. In, in, in verse 4, notice this. <clears throat> By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches, or by being humble and fearing the Lord, he says, are riches and honor and life. But notice this in verse 5. 
Thorns and snares are in the way of the forward. He that doth, doth keep his soul shall be far from them. So this morning we see that being humble and fearing the Lord. And this is some of the things this morning that the Bible really stresses in, on the fear of the Lord. We need to fear him. We don't Amen. need to be afraid of him, but we need to fear him. We need to understand what his power is and, and how that how that we can please him or how that we can uh, displease him. Because, listen, there is there is fear uh, in the Lord, and, and, and he will... will will we'll show it sometimes when we disobey him. But here, thorns and snares are a type of pain and being trapped in things or being snared in things or in the way of the forward. This is the one that just goes right ahead and just does not, does not pay any attention to anything he's doing. Thorns and snares are in the way of the forward. He that doth keep his soul shall be far from them. And that's being far from the forward. And so this morning, uh, I, want you to, uh, I want you to understand these things because in uh, uh, verse uh, 5 there, and, and talking about the forward, he said in Matthew 16, 26, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world? And loses his soul. Right and here, he's talking about uh, humility and fear, and 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 uh, trying to grasp onto the riches and things of this world. It don't. It won't profit us nothing. So we 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 need to realize that God is the one that gives the increase. Amen. And if we if we if we don't get that increase like that we think we should, listen. Sometimes. I mean, not sometime, but all the time, the Lord knows best. Amen. He knows what we need, and he knows what we don't need. And listen, don't grumble about it. Just pray and say, Lord, help me uh, to understand. Because uh, sometimes it's, it's, you know, the poor don't have anything. And they, their, their knees are easier to bend. Their hearts can be easier, more humble than those that have the worldly goods and, and, and right. depending on them. And so, you know, really all in all, the poor are rich and the rich are poor. Mm -hmm. in, in, in a sense, because uh, they, serve, they, they, they serve the Lord. Most, most time, the humble and the, and the poor are closer to the Lord than those that are dependent on the riches of this world. So here's again, train up a child in verse six. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Amen. Now, in Ephesians, Ephesians six, I believe it is six one, children obey your parents in the Lord, for it is it is pleasing to him. So it also tells the father of those children not to be rude with them. Not, well, I'm, I need to read it. Let me read it just a little bit here, and I'll get it a little bit clearer to you. And I know you've heard it read a lot, but anyway, it's good. Ephesians, Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6. Uh, I'm getting there. Okay, children, obey your parents in the Lord, Lord, for this is right. Amen. But now listen. Honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment of promise. You're so you're to obey them and not not question them, but you're to obey them. It that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. Promise from God. Amen. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Amen. And then it goes on to say, Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling and singleness of your heart. 
as unto Christ. In other words, if we're working for someone, if we are uh, uh, under somebody's authority, we are, to, we are to treat them just like we would God. Because he says here, with fear and trembling and singleness of, of your heart as unto Christ. And so this is some of the things here that he is talking about here when he's saying, train up a child in the way that he, that he should go, and when he is old, he won't depart from it. Now, the, the seventh verse is, the rich ruleth over the poor, and the borrower is a servant of the lender. Now, we've heard, used to be Brother Terry's, one of his things, that was, that was uh, he quoted for you, and quoted for you, and listen, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. And if, if it didn't, it wouldn't be in the Bible. Right. But here, uh, you, you need to teach, you need to prevent uh, 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 from borrowing from, from anybody if you can. But listen, there comes times when you have to borrow money to buy what you need and you can pay it back in installments. But he says here uh, in verse, uh, uh, he not to be a servant, uh, and the borrower is the servant of the lender. And that this morning is is if you let it be that way. But now the thing of it is, you don't have to be the servant of the lender. But all you have to do is pay him back. And uh, but anyway, uh, we want we want to see a, a, a little bit about this this morning. If I can, I thought I wrote a, made a note down when I wanted to. But anyway, I didn't. But anyway, the the. Uh, I want, to, I want to read, the rich ruleth over the poor, and the borrower is a servant of the lender. And so the, he's saying, uh, I, I, I know what I said now, in Malachi, I want, you, I want you to see something this morning. In Malachi, three and verse eight, and it's a pretty, pretty familiar scripture. I'm just talking about I'll get there in a minute. Just bear with me. But truly, I broke down on something wrong. I, I thought it was uh, math. It was. Uh, let me see my notes if I can find it. Malachi 3 8. Huh. I, I, I misquote something. Sorry about that. Uh, well, I'm, I'm sorry. There's, there's something that must be too late. I wanted to read you. Well, I can't remember. I, I don't know the scripture and I can't even remember it. Oh, okay. Anyway, we're going to the next verse. Uh, I have something I wanted to tell you about uh, because uh, this this thing here of, of borrowing, a lot of times, and I I want I want I want, and it's about tithing. In Malachi three, I thought it was three eight, but it ain't may not be. And and in, in in your tithing and all this, listen. Sometimes we become the borrower because that we don't pay the Lord what he has, uh, what he asks of us, a tenth. And listen, he can take away just as well as he can add to. And, 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 and uh, Malachi says, he says here, somewhere or another in here, I know, he says, I'll pour you out a blessing which you're not able to receive. And listen, if that's, if that, if that's right, and he says that's right because of uh, the, the reason that you that you tithe, he says, this is the reward that I'll give you, that I'll pour you out a blessing. And you and 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 and, and if we, if we if he does that to you, then listen, you're not going to be a borrower begging from the rich. If you obey the Lord, I believe that he's going to fill you fill, you, fill, fill up your uh, your needs and, and you won't have that that problem. So 
This is my, is my thing on this. It's 310. Huh? 310. 310. Thank you, Brother Larry. Yeah? Okay. Bring me all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now, herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room really enough to receive it. Amen. And so this morning, uh, uh, there's no need, if we obey the Lord, He's promised to take care of our needs. Yeah. Now we, and again, this this may not eliminate barring. You may tithe right down to the and, and overtithe, and sometimes you have to borrow. But the thing of it is, I'm, this he'll make a way that you will not have to be a servant to this because you had to borrow money. And so this is something here that it, that uh, that uh, he uh, Solomon wanted the people to know about, and so. He says here in verse 8, He that soweth iniquity shall reap vanity, and the rod of his anger shall fail. So he, this vanity, I wrote it down, is excess proudness or one's uh, self-satisfaction. And he's saying here, He that soweth iniquity shall reap vanity, and the rod of his anger shall fail. And so this morning... When, when we think of all these things that we're uh, reading about here this morning, we should uh, understand that the Lord is in charge. He's, he's fully in charge. Uh, we don't have to worry about things that we worry about a lot of the time because, listen, he's already in charge. He knows what's going to happen. And uh, I, I hope that uh, you, can, you can get a little something out of this this morning because... Uh, all in all, it's God, and it's God, and it's God. Amen. And, and He's the one that we're to serve, and He's the one that we're to obey. And listen, all of the problems, a lot of the times that we're having, is because that we're just not we're just not close enough to the Lord. And I know problems happen, and I know that this, that the Lord sends problems our way to draw us closer. And I know He uses problems. And I know this morning that. We need to submit to him, and we need to pray to him and say, Lord, now, this thing that's coming up on me, if it's for disobedience, I want to get it out of my way. Amen. I want to get it right with you because sometimes, sometimes we get astray from the Lord and, and we just are not as close to him as we should be, and he's got to shake us a little bit, people. Amen. Amen. We're, we're in this old flesh, and I keep hollering about the flesh being sinful. It is sinful. Amen. And it's going to cause you problems. And so you need to keep heads up on this flesh, and you need to understand how that it thinks and where that you can counteract. And the only way that you can is to keep prayed up and say, Lord, I need your help. And, and, the, and the, send the send me send me help through the Holy Spirit let him speak to me through thy word show me what I've done and help me to be ready to change if I need to change because that's it we're living for we're living with a under a merciful God amen he is merciful and he are here and the Lord Jesus Christ is sitting right there by his side, standing by his side. He's there by his side. And listen, he's making intercessions for us. And when we pray, he hears us. And he takes that message to God. And he vouches for us. And he says, hey, I died for this person. Had that blood I shed for him also. Amen. And, and listen, God hears him. God honors his son, Jesus Christ, because he came to this world and lived and died for our sins. And he will, he will hear it. And so that's, that's our, it's a, he's our advocate. Amen. He's our, he's our, and, and, and we just, we just need to use him like he wants us to because uh, you can't you can't ask too much of, of God. Amen. And if you don't if you don't ask, he don't he won't he he, he wants to hear from you. 
He wants to hear from you, and he wants to know that you're in his will, and uh, he won't, he knows you're in his will when he when you continue to pray to him and ask him for things. So hopefully this will encourage you a little bit. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry that the study was. I had a, I had a good study myself, and I didn't uh, do as well as I wanted to. But anyway, there's a, the Bible there, and you can get back in there and read on it, and maybe you'll get a better blessing than what I've had you with. Thank you so much. Yeah.